Good morning. Can we give Jesus some praise this morning? Come on, we serve a dependable God. We can depend on Him. No matter what we're going through, honestly, we can depend on Him. Don't look at your circumstances because we know that He is intentional God. Everything works for the good of those who love Him. So whatever you're going through, just remind yourself, what I'm going through, I know that God has got my back. Can I get an amen? amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, yeah, it's so amazing to be back again in person. And uh, we thank God. Uh, if you're joining us online, welcome, 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 and happy 2022. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, you know, this is one of the most common phrases we like to use, isn't it? God bless you. And how many know uh, actually what it means? What does it mean to be blessed? What does it mean to be blessed? Now, blessed is actually a Christian word. Uh, blessed is a spiritual word. Blessed is actually a biblical word. But how many know our culture is kind of... Uh, hijack that word and it's being used just anywhere <laughs> I mean to be honest I've, I've met people who um, who are not even Christians who say bless you have you ever sneezed all of a sudden bless you or I've even met a, a, an atheist and um, it was on an outreach I was really surprised because he was really anti-God and anti-everything and um, at, at some point he said God bless you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> you see, the word blessed is actually the word that Jesus used in the Sermon on the Mount. It comes from a Greek word, and it's makarius. Makarius. You know what it actually means? It means happy and fortunate. It means happy and fortunate. But a blessing is a powerful word. Because when God blesses something... He takes what you have and he multiplies that blessing. That, that's what blessing is. Remember what happened when Jesus blessed the fish and the bread? Remember he took it, he blessed it, and he handed them out. He multiplied what he had. Now that's exactly what happens when you're blessed. When you're blessed, all your needs are met. And honestly, as your pastor... Uh, that's exactly what I want to happen in your life. I want every need that you have to be met in 2022 and beyond. That's my prayer for all of us this morning. My carries also means self-contained happiness. Self-contained happiness. Um, I was actually looking into this and you know the Greek island Cyprus. I know mean, it was a beautiful place. Back in the day, they used to actually call it the Happy Isle. You see, they believed because of its location, because of its perfect climate, because of its perfect soil condition, you literally could grow anything. And anyone who actually lived in Cyprus was called blessed and happy. So, you see, the idea of happiness is independent, uh, you know, to our circumstances. It is self-contained. It means regardless of what's happening around us, what's happening all around us, we can still be happy. And you know what? Honestly, today I want to tell you, as followers of Jesus, we are blessed. We are blessed. And we can be blessed. You know, as your pastor, the Bible actually holds me accountable. The Bible holds me accountable for your spiritual growth. And I don't really take that lightly. And if you choose to put yourself in this family, in this flock, under my spiritual care, uh, the Bible says that I'm accountable to God for your spiritual growth. That I'm actually accountable for you to grow and not stay stagnant. Stay the same. So I want to tell you this morning that regardless of the challenges around you, I want, to, I want 2022 and beyond 
be the best years of your life. I want God to bless your finances. I want God to bless your business. If you have a business, if you have a job, I want God to bless your job. Everything you touch to be blessed. I want God to bless your health. I want God to bless your family. I want God to bless your relationship, your marriage, your children. I want God to bless every area of your life. And that's my prayer for all of you this morning. I want to just quickly go through three very important facts about God's blessing on our lives. And this is really important. If you've got a pen and paper, honestly, write it down because you're going to need this to remind yourself. Number one, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve God's blessing. You know, I want to tell you that I don't deserve it. I can't work towards it. I can't earn it. I can receive it though because we serve an amazing God. It's totally a gift. It's a gift. God's blessing is a gift. In John chapter 1 verse 16, it says this. We have all benefited, all of us. We have all benefited from the rich blessings he brought upon us. Blessing upon blessing heaped upon us. We serve an amazing God. We serve an amazing God. Can I get an amen? Yeah. We serve an amazing God. Come on, church. I want to tell you, we don't deserve it. It's a gift. That's his nature. Number two, he enjoys blessing us. Did you know that? That God actually enjoys blessing us? God enjoys blessing his children. You know, just as we enjoy blessing our children... God enjoys blessing His children. You know, you, you can't love without giving. It's impossible, right? You can't love without giving. And that's the kind of God we serve. Listen to what it says in Jeremiah 32, verse 31. This is what God is saying. I will enjoy blessing them. With all my heart and soul. I will faithfully plant them in this land. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, maybe God is just referring to the Jews, right? Because he promised them a land. I want to tell you this morning that that's not the case. I want to show you in Isaiah 56 verse 3. And this is what it says. By the way, Gentiles is all of us. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And this is what it says. And my blessings... Are for Gentiles too. When there's always a condition, I want to tell you this morning, God's blessing is always conditional. And my blessings are for Gentiles too. What's the condition? When they accept the Lord. When you accept Him as your Lord, His blessings are for you too. And it says, Don't let them think that I will make them a second class citizen. Why don't you just tell your neighbor you're not a second-class citizen? What about the other neighbor? Tell him, I am not a second-class citizen. <laughs> Amen. You see, and then God continues on and it says, they can be as much mine as anyone. But can you see how he says, they will be? He didn't say they will be he said, they can be. Because God's blessing is always conditional. And that's exactly what it leads to a next point. Number three, God's blessing is not automatic. They are always conditional. And I think sometimes we get it wrong. We think, you know, the minute you become a Christian, all the blessings will follow. That's not the case. It's not automatic. Every blessing that God promises is conditional. The Bible teaches us that uh, over and over that God promises and even actually guarantees. He says, he will do, he will bless your life if you do this. Always, if you do this. And did you know that this Bible here, 
there are actually over 7,000 promises. Over 7,000 promises in the Bible. And every single one you will find is there's a condition attached to that blessing. There's always a condition attached to God's blessing. If you confess your sins, what does God do? He forgives your sins. If you call upon him, he will save you. If you obey him, he'll bless you. You see, I want to tell you this morning that God is waiting for you. That God is waiting for you. It's not the other way around. A lot of times we think, God, where are you? And God is saying, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Let me just read this in Deuteronomy 28, verse 2 to 8. Verse 2 says, you will experience all these blessings. And he's going to give a list. You will experience all these blessings. And here comes the condition, if. There's always if. If what? If you obey the Lord, your God. And then God continues to list the blessings. Verse 3. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit basket and your breadboards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. And how many know we got enemies Church, we got enemies. If you're a believer of Jesus, you will have enemies. And look, listen to what it says. When they attack you, they will attack you from one direction. But listen to this. But they will scatter from you in seven. We serve an amazing God. And then verse 8. This is a promise. This is a promise. You need to make a note of it. The Lord will guarantee a blessing. This is a guarantee. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything, everything, everything you do. And will fill your storehouses with grain. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. And he's talking about prosperity here. A lot of times we think prosperity is not for Christians. It is. And as you pass that, I want these words to come true in your life. I want these words to come true in your life. But how many of you know, you need to become blessable for God to be able to bless you. You need to become blessable if you want God to be able to bless you. I want to tell you that God actually wants to showcase his blessings. Why? Because, because he wants it to be a witness to other people. Let me read this. This is amazing. Psalm 31 verse 19. And this is what it says. How great is the goodness you have stored up for those who fear you. God, I want to tell you, God has actually stored up blessings for you and I. That God has stored up blessings for you and I. And here comes the condition for those who fear God. Are we talking about fear like terrified fear? No, right? When you reverently, you're in awe of God. You, you reverent Him. And then it says, you lavish in on those who come to you for protection. When you don't run to money for protection. When you don't run to other people for protection. When you run to God for protection. And then it says, blessing them before the watching world. How many know there's people watching us? That people are watching us. If you're a believer of Jesus Christ, people are watching you. And if your life is no different to anyone else, why would they want a savior? <laughs> right? So God has actually stored up blessings and he's just waiting and saying, you know what? I want you to become blessable so that I can bless you. Why? Because God wants the world to see how good he is. Because God wants to see how good he is. 
But I want to tell you this morning that these blessings are not automatic. And here is the danger, honestly. A lot of times, as Christians, we can live our life and not see some of the blessings that God has stored up for us in heaven. You know, you can continue coming to church. You can actually continue serving even and not see some of the blessings. Why? Because God's blessings are always conditional. And as your pastor, I want God to bless you in such a way that will be a testimony. That will be a testimony to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors, to everyone around you. That you'll be a testimony of how good God is. That when they see you, they know that you're highly favored. That you're highly blessed. So who can get the glory? So that God can get the glory. Can I get an amen? So let me just give you quickly three reasons why God loves to bless us. Number one, because he's a blessing God. Because he's a blessing God, he loves to bless. He loves to bless. He actually enjoys blessing us. Number two, he wants it to be a witness to other people. He wants the blessing that he gives you to become a witness to the world that is out there without a savior. Number three, God blesses you so you can be a blessing to others. God wants to bless you so you can become a blessing to others. He doesn't bless you so you can become self-centered. That's not, his, that's, that's not what he blesses us for. He doesn't want us to become self-centered. He actually wants us to be able to help the less fortunate now that I've laid the foundation, I want to share five things that God says. If you do this, I will bless your life. If you do this, I will bless your life. And these five things, I think, are very crucial. Like I said, there are over 5,000 promises. But I want to give you five things that God says. If you do this, I will bless you. So let us just pray before we begin. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you that you're an amazing God. Thank you that we can depend on you for everything. Father, we want to pray. We want to, we want to become blessable. We don't want to go through life and not get what you have in store for us. Those blessings that you have stored up for us, we want to be able to get them. So, Father, I want to pray right now that you use me, Father, as I share your word. I want to pray that you prepare hearts right now to be able to receive these words. Not just to receive it, but to actually put it into action. Because without action... Nothing happens. So, Father, we just want to pray right now that you use me right now as your instrument. Remove all distractions. Prepare us this morning to hear how you want to bless us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. So, number one, God promises to bless my life if I meet with him daily. God wants to bless you, but he wants a, an appointment with you on a daily basis. You see, God promises over and over. There's so many blessings, um, you know, promises in the Bible that says, if you meet with me daily, I will bless you. And this is very important because Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. It's not about a list of things to do and then you get to heaven. It's not, oh, I've done my good deeds, now I'm okay for the rest of the year. No. God wants to meet with you daily. Christianity is a relationship with a living God. He wants to have a relationship with you. It could be five minutes. It could be ten minutes. It could be twenty minutes. It could be an hour. But he wants to have an appointment with you on a daily basis. When you just sit down in a quiet and you say, God, I love you. What do you want to say to me this morning? What's on your heart? Then you can bring all your troubles before him. You say, God, this, this is really bothering me. Can you help me with this? Where you... Go before him and read the word of God and you just read it. But not just for the sake of reading. You read it so you can 
ask the Holy Spirit now Holy Spirit what can I do with what I've just read how can I apply this into my life and then you stop meditating on a day throughout the day on your way to work on your way back to work you just meditate on it listen to what it says in Proverbs 8 34 it says blessed are those who listen to me watching daily at my doors waiting at my doorway can you see there are three things that he's mentioning listening watching and waiting listening watching waiting what does that say he wants god wants a daily appointment with you and i that's what god wants he wants a daily an appointment with you and i he doesn't want us to just come on a sunday and just leave him there in church and then live the rest of the week without him no god wants a daily appointment with you um, I'm, I'm honestly if you have ever read any biographies every person who's been super blessed or have done amazing things in their life they had a daily appointment with God on daily they met with God and that's how they got super blessed now we're only nine days in into the new year if you have your new year resolution it's not too late just put it down I'm going to have a daily appointment with God. Daily appointment with God. We're now in our um, day nine of our 21 days of praying and fasting. It's amazing. Honestly, it's going so well. It's not late. You can still join us. There are books out there where you can pick. It's got daily devotion. Each day we're praying about a topic. The, the theme is shalom. Because I really believe we can have peace even in chaos. But is it, again, is it, is a choice? And, and that's our team. Regardless of what's going on, we can still experience God's peace in our life. You can still join us. And every evening we meet. We meet uh, for a, a, a prayer at Zoom. Why not joining us? You be blessed. You be blessed. The other thing as well, um, honestly, when I was thinking, uh, you version. You version is amazing. You version Bible. If you want to put that up, yeah, you can um, read, listen, you can study the Bible. It's got every translation that you can think of. It's absolutely free. They've even got so many different languages. Uh, it's amazing because when you actually open it, the first thing you see on the front thing is got a daily devotion. They, they pick a scripture and they get someone. Who can expand on that scripture and give you a, 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 a boost, like a, a minute uh, of proper theological explanation about that verse. Then you can slide it. He then he has the scripture that you can actually start sharing it or save it. You can put it on your desktop where you can meditate on that scripture, right? You can continually think about it. You can share it with family and friends. It's got amazing daily devotions that you can actually pick. You know, when God says, you know, he wants to put a, put a topic in your heart and you feel like, you know what, I need to work on this. You can actually go and search for that particular topic that your God just wants you to go deeper on. And you can actually pick. There are so many different topics that you can, um, uh, you know, daily devotions that you can pick. There are amazing resources that is available absolutely for free. And you can, you can actually add that to your um, yearly resolution where you can meet with God. Point number two. This leads me to point number two. God promises to bless my life if I study and apply His Word into my life. You see, it's not just about reading. It's about studying it. But not just studying it, it's about applying it into our lives. We have to apply it. God says, if you get this book into your heart, if you get this book into your mind, He will bless your business, He will bless your job, He will bless your family, He will bless your health, 
He'll bless everything, your finances, everything. You see, this is how you find your, the will of God for your life. If you don't read this, you can't find the purpose and the plans that God has for your life. The only way you can find it is through the word of God. Can I get an amen? amen. Now, I want to read Psalms 1. I know Pastor Fabian did an amazing job actually on this. He shared a, a sermon on Psalm 1. But I just want you to listen to this again. Verse 1. It said, blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that the sinners take or sits in the company of mockers. How many know who you have around you matters? Like it says, it starts with walking with them and the next thing you know you'll stand with them. Next thing you know you find yourself sitting with them and find your life completely out of God's plan, out of God's way. The plans and purposes he has for your life. Then he's, so if you want to be blessed, you don't want to be around the wrong, those kind of people, right? Number t- uh, verse 2. And it says, blessed is whose delight is in the law of the Lord. What is the law of the Lord? The word of God. And who meditates on this law day and night. God wants us to meditate on it. And it says, verse 3. That person is like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in the season and whose leaves does not wither. And then this is the promise. Whatever they do, prospers. Whatever they do, prospers. Now we are in the new year. And what a perfect opportunity, perfect time for us to do a self-assessment, self-examination. Uh, Sister Stephanie did an amazing job in leading us into those prayers. We need to ask God, God, is there anyone in my sphere that is actually can cause me to be walking with someone who can take me away from your path? Is there anyone that I should cut off from my sphere? Who have I surrounded myself with? Ask yourself, do I enjoy reading the Bible? If not, why? How can I apply? Do I meditate on reading the Bible? By the way, meditation is not like, mm, it's not like that, right? <laughs> meditation is actually thinking about what you read. When you think about what you read, you don't go and start going, mm. <laughs> You meditate on it. How can I apply this word that I've just read into my life? How can I apply it? How can I apply? How can I practice it on a daily basis? And as your pastor, I want you to prosper in everything you do. And But it's conditional. There's so much I can do for you. That's why I say this is Christianity is not a, a religion. It's a relationship. God wants to have a relationship with you. So if you want to be blessed, you have to study the word. You have to meditate the word. You have to apply the word into your life. Listen to what it says in James chapter 1 verse 25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, this is what gives freedom. This is what gives freedom. Whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but actually doing what they, they, they will be blessed in what they do. You want to be blessed in what you want to, in what you do? It says, look intently, not forgetting it, but actually doing it. Look intently, study the Bible, not forgetting it. Is remember it. Did you know um, scientists have proven that um, we forget 95% of what we hear 
in within 72 hours. And these are those guys that are really smart. <laughs> For me, it would be a lot quicker. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, if you don't take notes, you'll forget. If you don't take notes, you will forget. And if you forget, remember, nothing changes in your life. A lot of times we can say, oh man, that was a great message. And then by the time we leave, you already forgot what, what the message was about. No changes. One ear in, the other ear out. I want to encourage you to take notes. Take notes. Even when you do your Bible study. Have your journal. Because God will speak to you. I promise you. God will show those scriptures actually jumping out at you. <laughs> just just make a note of it. God, God spoke to me and said this. And then start meditating on it and just. Number three. God promises to bless my life if I tithe my wages. If I tithe my wages. Now what does it mean? Um, it means I give, if I get 10%, uh, if I get 10 pounds, I give one pound back to God. That's 10% of what I make. Why do you think that is? Do you think God needs our money? No, right? So why do you think God wants us to give money back to him? You see, God wants what it represents. You know what money represents most of the time? Represents our heart. God wants our heart. When you get to a place where you can freely give, then you know you, your heart is right. Because Jesus said, for whatever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Malachi 3 verse 10, it says this. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And this is the only time the Bible actually gives us a promise. It says, test me in this. God says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room enough to store it. Test me in this. And I promise you, it's, uh, I remember when I first gave my 10%. You know, in the back of your head is like, it doesn't make any logical sense. You know, oh, you know, you know when you start looking at your bills, you look at all the different things that's going on. And you're like, oh, I don't know. How can, how can I give more? And where is the money going to come from? I mean, how is God going to bless me? But actually, when you're obedient, I promise you. I've seen so many miracles in my life that it was just impossible without God. When I know that's definitely God blessing me for, um, for, for, for honoring me for what I've done. For giving back to Him. By the way, did you see how it says bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. We bring it back to church. This is the minimum what we can we do. This is minimum. Tithe is minimum. God actually expects us to do more. He wants us to be even more generous. But we bring it back to church so God can, uh, God's ministry can continue. And that's the church that you actually attend. And God says, test me in this. And honestly, as your pastor, that's the kind of blessing I want for your life. A lot of times we can rob ourselves from God's blessing because we don't take God's word and apply God's word into our life. We come up with all sorts of excuses why, uh, you know, tithing is the Old Testament thing. Um, we don't have time to go through it, but in the New Testament, there's so many scriptures that talks about actually more radical giving than just a tent. God promises to bless my life if I help others. Number four, if... I help others who are in need. If I help others in need, God will bless me. Listen to what it says in Psalm 41 verses 1 to 2. God says, blessed are those who have regard for the weak. The Lord delivers them 
in times of trouble. Verse 2. The Lord protects and preserves them. They are counted among the blessed in the land. He does not give them over to the desires of their foes. God is saying he's watching to see if you're helping the poor. He's watching to see whether we're helping the poor. Why? Because God loves the poor. He wants us not to be selfish. He wants us to be unselfish. Are you being unselfish with the blessings that I'm giving? If I can't trust you with the little, how can I trust you with more? Right? And that's why when you give your tithes and your offering, and then, then, then you're saying, God, I put my trust in you, not in my money. I put my trust in you. And when you do that, man, God starts opening the door. God wants us to be his hand and feet. And in Proverbs 22 verse 9, it says this. The generous will themselves be blessed. For they share their food with the poor. God is saying, if you're generous, you will be blessed. If you are generous, you will be blessed. And uh, this is my last point. God promises to bless my life, number five, if I share the good news. If I share the good news, God promises to bless my life. Just think about it. If, if, I, if I had a cure for cancer and I didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't share it with anyone, I deserve to go into prison for that. But just think about it. You have the answer for eternal life. You have the answer for eternal life. You have the answer of how someone can be forgiven. To have the relationship back with God. To find purpose and understanding for life. To get a home in heaven. We have the answer. And God is saying, what are you doing with it? Are you sharing? Are you sharing the good news? Philemon chapter 6, it says, I pray that your partnership with us in faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. I want to ask you this morning, is anyone going into heaven because of you? Are you sharing the good news? Are you sharing your testimony? I love... Um, um, Lisa, you here? Just wave if you're here. Yeah, there, there she is, Lisa. Um, I love her, her, her passion for sharing the gospel. Every chance she gets, she's always on the, on the Facebook, uh, Facebook Live, and she's singing for God. She's sharing stuff. And um, actually, just before Christmas, wasn't it, uh, Lisa? Um, a radio presenter from Whittenshaw FM heard her on Facebook Live, and she got in touch with her, said, Lisa, um, I would really like to interview you, but after the interview, I would love if you could just sing for the people in Whittenshaw. And guess what? <laughs> she did it. Yay! And it was amazing. I'll share it later on on the WhatsApp group. You can just listen to the testimony. She just bragged about God, how good God is. Just bragging and bragging about how wonderful he is. How God has really transformed her, changed her life. And then she started sharing about her church family. So many amazing things she said on that interview. So amazing. Every time. This is not the first time actually, by the way. Um, because of her, we actually ended up um, life. I remember Pastor Mike and Mary and... Um, you remember we went on the radio in Whittenshaw FM. Um, again, Lisa went and said, you know, talking about her faith and what God has done into her life. They were so impressed that they called us up and said, look, we want you guys to come and just share about your church. You see, that's the kind of excitement God wants. If you, we, he deserves that, doesn't he? 
He deserves that, right? God wants you to be vocal about your faith. Don't be a hidden Christian. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I met, um, I remember in my, uh, in my job, my previous job in, um, in the bank, I remember uh, I was very vocal, by the way, and uh, there was two people that I, I didn't even know they were Christians. I didn't even know they were Christians. I mean, the, the attitude was definitely non, non-Christian. The language definitely wasn't any Christian-like. And um, I remember I, 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 there was a meeting that we were at, and I found out one of them was actually a worship leader, and the other one was some sort of leader in the church. That's not the kind of Christian God wants. That's not the kind of followers God's want. We need to be watchful of what we say. God wants us to be like Lisa, sharing the goodness, sharing about what God has done into your life. When you do that, he blesses you. He blesses you. He blesses you. Um, inst- you know, Instagram, Facebook, amazing places to share about God. You know, I told you about, uh, you know, version, the Bible app. Honestly, all you have to do is just click the scripture and then say, I want to create a background. It comes with the picture that you can pick. You can pick loads of pictures and then you can automatically does it for you. And then you say you want to share it and you just share it on Facebook or whatever, WhatsApp to a family, friend. Let's be vocal Christians. Let's just in 2022, just be actively vocal about who God is and what God has done into your life. Can we just give him some praise this morning? Worship team, can I just get you to come back up, please? So this morning, can we all just stand if we can? I want to tell you, if you want to be blessed, if you want to be blessed, remember, You need to meet with God daily. God wants a daily appointment with you. If you want to be blessed, you have to study His Word and apply His Word into your life. If you want to be blessed financially, you need to tide your wages. You need to help others who are in need. Number five, you need to share the good news with everyone. Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for you are a good, good God. We can always depend on you. Father, how amazing is it that you have actually blessings stored up for us. You have blessings stored up for us and you're just ready for us to become blessable. Father, I want to pray right now. For everyone in this service, everyone watching online who has made a decision to become a blessable person, that Father, you will stir them up right now. Stir them up, Father, so they can want to have a new relationship with you. A relationship of fire. Father, we just want to thank you that you stir up hearts right now. You stir up hearts. No more Sunday Christian. No more Sunday Christian. But daily Christian. Where we be co- pick up our cross and walk daily with you. Where we meet with you on a daily basis. Father, I want to thank you that you bring in new excitement right now. Fresh zeal and excitement. To share our, your, your, your tes- our testimonies of your goodness. To be vocal about what you have done. Father, we thank you. Make us blessed. We want to be blessed. We no longer wait for you, but we want to take the action. Because we know you're waiting for us. You're waiting for us to respond. So we respond. Father, we love you. We, pour, we, we, we worship you. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Thank you.